So, before I get into the topic of today's video, I guess I do have to point out the elf in the room, especially for those who are Cowboys fans. As of yesterday, I believe, the Dallas Cowboys traded a first round pick for Oakland Raiders wide receiver Amari Cooper. And from what I know about Amari Cooper, from what I've seen from Amari Cooper, and from what I know our offense is capable of doing, I actually love this trade a lot. This is exactly what we need. You know, we got Cole Beasley, we got Michael Gallup, we got Tavon Austin, and we have Amari Cooper. Our receiving core is... Shoot, it's amazing. I can't wait to see what happens after this week. And the best part is, since we have a bye week this week, it gives Amari Cooper extra time to get adjusted to our offense and therefore work his way into, you know, the repetitions in the starting lineup that will allow him to succeed better. So there you go. There, I guess there is sort of an advantage to trading right before a bye week. That's, that's pretty smart. So, on that note, happy hump day, everybody! Yep, it's hump day. We are halfway through the week, sort of, and the weekend is almost here. And I am super duper happy about that. No, uh, actually, I gotta say, for once, the Facebook uploading time was not very long at all. I don't know what happened. Nor do I care because you guys actually got your video from me pretty much on time, which, which is awesome. So, yeah, there's a, there's that. Um, darn it, what was I going to talk about today? <laughs> um, oh, right. I was going to do a TP Tales, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, sorry again with that project that I'm really starting to regret doing and the fact that, you know, it's been so busy I completely forgot to do both uh, TP Tales and the Raider Reports. So, I'm going to try and be a lot better about making up on that. And what better to start than right now? So... We're actually getting to, well, back at Trinity Polling, I mentioned before, we had classes on Monday through Saturday, and Wednesday and Saturday were half days, but let's be honest, the fact you have school at all on a Saturday is already a real pain. I think we can all agree on that, but I do recall... That, um, oh, well, actually, one particular, um, instance on a Saturday that was a real, oh, it was almost a downer for me, but I ended up saving it because of, um, what ended up happening. I was actually on my way to, um, my, it was, it was Saturday morning, and the first class of the day that I had was my English class, with, believe it or not, one of the 16 of the of the right. Yeah, Ben Wallace and I talked about any of them. It was actually my wrestling coach at Trinity Pauling, just for a frame of reference. And there was actually this one sort of, um, I guess a reading room, you would like to call it, if you want to call it that. It had like a whole bunch of books and encyclopedias and it was a place you could do your schoolwork or whatever. It was actually a really quaint little room. In fact, I actually went in that room when I first oriented at Trinity Pauling, so there you go. And I got to the Dan building. The, the Dan building is where we had all of our, you know, school subjects pretty much. I got to the Dan building about, I don't know, a half hour, 40 minutes early. For those of you who don't know, I very much value promptness. And, yeah, so I got to their stuff pretty early. Anyway, so my English class is right across the hall from this uh, reading room and so I just peeked into the uh, reading room for just a brief minute and keep in mind this is school on a Saturday 
my complete expression came down to pretty much this. Give or take, maybe a, a slight scowl here and there. But, um, anyway, I keep this expression from pretty much my dormitory, which was Dunbar, to all the way to the damn building. I peek inside the reading room in the damn building, and all of a sudden, I see... I want to say this kid was probably... Either a freshman or a seventh or eighth grader, because Trinity probably actually had uh, seventh, eighth, seventh and eighth graders as well. And so, this little kid immediately goes, "You, me, Santa, kind of, let's go." And keep in mind, I keep, I'm, st I still have this expression. It was actually funny because this kid was with like two of his friends, and one of them's like. Did he even listen to you? And then the other one's like, No, no, he did. Otherwise, he would have, he wouldn't have moved at all, or something like that. Anyway, so I still keep this expression. Meanwhile, this kid is, he's going like, <laughs> and he's still, you know, you know, the staring contest get went on for about. A good 30 to 45 seconds. And through it all, while he's, you know, sort of giggling and moving around, I'm still doing this. And it's actually kind of funny because before I graduated from Horseheads, I took a class called Life 101. And for those of you Horseheads alumni who also took this course, and pretty much all of you did, you remember that when you do a staring contest... The main fact of a staring contest isn't to see who blinks first. The winner of the staring contest is the one who doesn't really show facial expressions. So basically, if you start a staring contest and you were to keep this face, if you change it at all, that's when you automatically lose. But for the sake of the fact that this is obviously a little kid and therefore he wouldn't have known this, I humored him and did the whole, you know, blinking scenario thing so again we're still you know he and I are staring each other down he sort of has the you know little kid smile on his face I'm still going like this until eventually the little kid darn it he didn't actually say darn it ladies and gentlemen but remember I don't curse in my videos so keep in mind throughout this whole thing I keep this expression I keep the expression as I'm turning around, go across the hallway, to where I'm going to have my English class. I set my backpack onto the table, because this was actually the sort of uh, classroom where it was like one giant circular like table with um, sort of an opening in the middle or whatever. And uh, yeah, everyone like got to each like sit around it or whatever. So I go to, excuse me, the other side of the, um, of the room. I'm basically, for those of you Trinity Pauling alumni who would know this, I'm, basically my back is to the window where the, uh, stairs outside are, the damn building, for frame of reference. So, I set my backpack down, sit down, take a deep breath. And then, hold on, I mean, and then I go, <sighs> still the king. Because honestly, I've always been pretty decent at staring contests, but yeah, so it was actually, it ended up being a pretty decent Saturday overall. I'm pretty sure it was the same day where, um, a few of us actually like went out and sunbathed for a while after classes after a class because I was doing track at the time and there was no track meet going on and remember and again classes ended on half day so at around like 11 11 30 class was already done and so yeah it was actually a pretty good day overall
Copa Vosa sunbathe. I do believe this was between the art building and East Dormitory. It's funny, this day I can still name where all the dorms are. There was uh, Dunbar, which is where I lived. Star, East Dormitory, Barstow, Cluett Building, which was actually the main building, but also had a few dormitories as well. Johnson, Son of a Gun, I completely forgot what the one next to Dunbar was. Oh, why do I not remember the one next to Dunbar? I should know this one. I should totally know this one, because this is where my um, environmental studies teacher was, the uh, dorm parent at. Darn it, where, what was it? Um, I should totally know this. I should totally know this. Ah. Uh, Hold on, let me look it up. I know, I really shouldn't. I shouldn't be doing this, ladies and gentlemen, but, uh... Hold on. Sorry, this will only take a minute. Uh... I'm sorry, uh, again, I really should know this, like, I can't believe I know. Um, uh, no, that's, um, hold on. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot the, I think I, I want to say I named them all, but I know for a fact I'm missing one. It's the one that's next to Dunbar. No, oh, well, maybe. I guess I'll try and look it up later. But, yeah. So. Darn it. This is going to haunt me, like, all day. Any fellow Trinity Pauling alumni who are watching this, what was the name of that dorm? It's the one next door to Dunbar. And it'd be the only one next door to Dunbar because on the other side of Dunbar was the tennis courts, for frame of reference. Trinity Pauling was actually a pretty decent, like, small... I mean, it was sort of like a... It really did feel like a legitimate, true college campus without actually being a college. I mean, where I was, I actually had a pretty, you know, primo location. Because I was, I mean, pretty much everywhere is within walking distance, but... From my perspective, to this day, I can literally still see Cluid Building from outside my window. I would like to go back to Trinity Pilot one day. I, I really should. I don't know. Maybe, well, it will be my 10-year reunion next year. It's sad, too, because I told myself when I went to my 5-year reunion back in 2014 that I don't want it to have it be another 5 years until I go back to Trinity Pauling. That's probably what it's going to end up being anyway. Funny enough, actually, Trinity Pauling Alumni Weekend may very well have already happened, and I didn't even know it. Oh well. I guess it is what it is. So, note to self, try and figure out what the name of that one dorm was that was next to Dunbar. And go on from there. So, and that note, please like, favorite, share, and hit that subscribe button. I can really use the support on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And as always, I'm very humbled I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I'm hopeful you all have a wonderful hump day. And remember, if any of you guys ever want to talk or chat, I'll always be here to lend an ear. And I'll always have your back. So take care.